we're having leftovers and this was our Thai curry and since I stored it over rice, um, it absorbed all the liquid, it's a little soggy, and the kids aren't totally loving it. I do. Olivia loves it. Okay. Olivia is such a good eater. She That's eats everything. Okay. Cody thinks it's okay. Boston hates it. That's okay. We're making him eat it anyway. And Cody was talking about a time when what? What were you just telling me? How you went to a friend's house. Were you nervous because you didn't want to say their names? I feel like if they watch it, they'll remember that time. Kim will think, Cody is such a Do you know what? Boy. I know Kim, and it's not gonna make her feel sad. Okay, Cody is literally the sweetest. He doesn't want me to say their names because he's like, what if they watch and what if they feel bad? They'll remember this time. Okay, just listen to the story and you'll know what we're saying. So Cody was over at his friend's house and the mom made chicken pot pie mm -hmm. and... She asked if I liked it and I said, yeah, even though I didn't really like it that much. So I just didn't think about like if how it didn't taste that good. So then I just ate it all and... It was, I was fine. Was it hard to eat the food? A little bit. A little bit. And I, as a proud, <laughs> as a proud stern mom, I, go sit down please. I was sitting here telling the kids as I'm listening to them eat. Cody is so nervous. Cody, I promise Kim is not going to care if she does watch the video. She's not gonna care if you didn't like her chicken pot pie. I, like I promise you. I bet if she were to watch this video, she would be super proud of you for eating something you didn't like. So, growing up, I remember my mom making us eat things that we didn't like, and I remember her telling my brother, when you go on your mission, when you're older, you're going, you might go to a place that you don't like the food. And there's a really funny story about our <laughs> Uncle Bo. He, <laughs> so you guys can help me. Bo went to Arkansas on his mission, and he went and ate, I think he had previously eaten at someone's house, and, and so he was full, but then he went to another person's house, and they made this meal for him, and it wasn't very good, I believe, and I hope I'm telling the story right. So he was eating, and he ate the second meal, he ate the second meal, and then the lady said, oh, you ate that up so good, here's another dish. Be quiet. I told him about six times. <laughs> okay, Lincoln, be quiet. So then she said, oh, you ate that second meal so good. Here's some more, and she gave him more. So Uncle Bo said that he didn't want to make him feel bad, so he was eating, and he oh. grabbed the fork, and he was so full. And his hand was shaking. Oh. And he was eating, and his hand was shaking, and he ate all the food, and then he excused himself to the restroom. And he barked it all up. And he threw up, but where did he throw up? In the sink. In the sink. But in the sink. Sink. He down the drain, so I had to scoop it up with his hands and put it in the toilet. Yes, he did that. He did that. And I was telling the kids, I don't know if anyone will understand what I'm saying when I say, Cody, aren't you glad that I, what? Lady, was, her tail was in between the chairs. <laughs> Lady, come. Lady, Lady, come. There you are. I was telling the kids, Cody, aren't you glad that I taught you how to eat food even though you didn't like it because in that situation you didn't want to make her feel bad and you were able to eat your dinner and you were fine, right? Yeah. I told the kids, I said, it's my job to teach you how to be uncomfortable. <laughs> and that might sound weird, but it's just a matter of toughening my kids up just a little bit so that they can withstand being in an uncomfortable position or you know standing when an old lady needs to sit down or a pregnant mother needs to sit down standing even if you're tired even if your legs hurt and it reminds me of a story when my mom was in the hospital with her mom, her mom was dying and certain nurses would come in and help my grandma and they would lean over the bed. And my mom said at one point she, she saw the nurse's leg kind of shaking um, because she didn't want to make my grandma uncomfortable on the bed and so the nurse was uncomfortable herself and was sacrificing you know, the comfort of her legs leaning over taking care of my grandma and that's an example of someone that was uncomfortable for 
the comfort of someone else. It shows how to be less selfish. Lincoln, I'm gonna throw you in your room and it's gonna be uncomfortable. Okay, go sit down, please. Go sit down. <laughs> go sit down and I want you just to listen. Okay. <laughs> Lincoln, sit down. It's a matter of making yourself uncomfortable to benefit someone else or to help someone else. Does that make sense to you guys? Do you see why sometimes I have you do things? And sometimes there, we've been in situations where other kids haven't had as much as we had. Like remember when we went to Mexico? And we yeah. had a pinata, and you two were so upset and sad that I no, wouldn't. I sad. Well, I Olivia was. was. <laughs> I was, I was like. <laughs> you wanted the candy in the pinata, but you sacrificed your comfort and your wants for the sake of the other kids because they don't get candy the way you get candy. They don't get it as often as you guys get it. And so you sacrificed your wants and your comfort to help someone else, right? And I think that that is a really important lesson to teach our kids. I and I don't, I don't know. I, it sounds a little harsh, but when you think, when you're trying to think of others and you're trying to put, I, I want my kids to see opportunities to put other people before themselves, to be a little less selfish, right? Because we live lives where we have everything we need. Boston, you're not leaving this table till you eat your dinner. So no more water. Eat your dinner, please. Take a bite so I can see. What was I seeing? <laughs> <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, this is what I was saying. We have everything. We have everything we need. We do not live lives of uncomfort. What am I saying? What? No. Can I? <laughs> yeah. What are you thinking? Okay. So, from the years that we started doing YouTube, I used to have these friends that became enemies, then friends, enemies, then friends over and over and I used to be so embarrassed to be doing videos for you guys like I was so embarrassed I was like I don't want them watching me watching me be me and it's and Cody's going through right now but I used to be so <laughs> embarrassed to just be myself on camera like I was so embarrassed but once once you get out of your once you get into your comfort zone when you just got out of the uncomfort zone, you're fine. You can do so many different things. You realize that, hey, if I'm myself or if I can be uncomfortable by helping, then do it. Then just, like, then <laughs> do so it. Sweet. You so. are very sweet. So be yourself. Try and put maybe others' needs above your own and see how that makes you feel. I remember, I'll, I'll stop giving stories. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, I'll tell you. So uh, my mom, I called, <laughs> I called my mom one time and I was wanting to vent and I was just, I don't know, maybe kind of feeling bad for myself, sitting home with the kids. Um, Joel was working graveyard shifts and I just wanted to vent to her and just complain a little bit. And she was not having it. <laughs> she was like, then... She said, what have you done for anyone lately? I was like, oh, freak, I don't know, nothing. And she, and I was like, I really was so annoyed. It just was so annoying to me. I was just like, I called to vent to you and this is like, this is what you're telling me? And she said, she goes, Bonnie, go find someone to do something for and you will feel better. So do you know what we did that day? Mm -hmm. I So I sat down I after I got over being annoyed. <laughs> I thought to myself, okay, who in our like neighborhood could I make extra dinner for? And so um, I went to the grocery store because I needed to buy groceries anyway, and I bought extra fruit. And we made up this whole huge like cut up tray of fruit, and we took it to a neighbor's, and um, and she was expecting a baby, and she was so grateful. I when she opened her door. All of her kids were running around, they were being rowdy, and I could see it on her face that she was feeling the same way that I was feeling at home with all of my kids, except she was expecting another baby, I wasn't. And Another I, kid running around. And I just thought, you know, she was going through the same thing I was, and I think I brightened her day, and in, and in turn, it made me feel so much better. So, 
Instead of during this quarantine time of feeling sad for ourselves, maybe this is a message of what can you do for someone else that in turn will make you feel better and more useful. So, yeah. okay, that's just what I was thinking and that's the vlog for the day. See you later, bye. Bye, bye. subscribe. What she said. <laughs>